Hi, my name is Creston. Welcome to Introduction to SQL. First, we're going to go over a few slides and then we're going to get into some live coding. Uh, if you want to follow along, the code that we're going to be using can be found in the link in the description below. All right, welcome to Introduction to SQL. Let's get started. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's basically a language for interacting with a relational database, otherwise known as an RDBMS. So what does that stand for? It stands for Relational Database Management System. And it's some example of SQL that you may have seen somewhere is select star or asterisk from um, a particular table. So like select all from orders or select all from addresses. So these are just statements that you can use to retrieve or modify information in a relational database system. So going into some examples of RDBMSs, there's Oracle, there's Microsoft SQL Server, there's MySQL, there's Postgres SQL. Uh, there's also an embedded database uh, called SQLite. So relational databases store data in tables. So you can think of information organized into columns and rows. In terms of terminology, typically you, hear, you may hear of in talking about relation. It's basically a relation is basically equivalent to a table. So you're storing related information together. Uh, you may hear of a term called a tuple. So what's a tuple? So you can think of that as a record in the database or a particular table. It's basically each row is its own record. Another name for that is a tuple. Uh, you may hear the term attribute. So basically what is in the column of a particular table is, is basically the field or value that you're storing. You could think of those as attributes. So here's some examples, some tables. I'm looking at a posts table as well as a comments table. So on the, on the very tables are posts and it has four columns. Uh, there's a unique ID column, a title for the title of the blog post, uh, the content it contains, and then when it was published at. So this is, think of it as a date time field. Um, this is an entirely different table, a comments table. Then this one has uh, five fields or five columns that have been defined. Again, it has a unique ID again, uh, what the comment is, a reference to the post that this comment is attached to. So these reference um, post 100, the user ID that's um, submitted it and when it was submitted. So these are just some examples of how data is stored in a relational database. All right, so basically, SQL is a high-level declarative language. That means you define the data you want to retrieve as opposed to how you're going to retrieve it. The database handles how it does it. However, you just specify what you want. For example, you say, I want the names of all the products that are blue. So the query you would send is select the name column from the products table where the color equals blue. So it's a very high level state which you want and the database will give it to you. You don't have to write for loops or do other programming to try and pull the data out how you want. You just ask the database for the exact information you want. Okay, so SQL has um, some different language types. Uh, so first is, and the most common is the DML or the data manipulation language. So these are a set of statements that modify or manipulate the data in a relational database. So you have a select that retrieves information from particular tables. You have an insert that inserts new data into tables. You have an update which updates existing information in the table, as well as a delete which removes records from the table. So similarly to this, you need a way to create tables, to modify tables, um, and other objects in the database like indexes, et cetera. So that's where DDL comes in or the data definition language. So some examples of statements uh, of those are you create 
a table, you create a database. You can alter databases or tables or indexes, and you can drop them, which is the equivalent to removing them. And for completing this, we're going to cover up two other additional language types that are used once you get um, more into uh, database usage. One is a data control language. So this basically is permissions. So it grant, it's granting permissions to be able to select or insert or delete or whatever permissions you want to a particular user or role of that database. You could also revoke those permissions. The next uh, language type is statements that deal with transaction control. So a transaction is basically assuring that, um, say, two or more operations happen all at once or they don't happen at all. An example is if you're transferring money from, say, customer A to customer B, you want that to happen all at once or not at all. So you don't want to remove the money from customer A, have the system crash, and then customer A doesn't have it and neither B, you need to have it both. It was withdrawn from A and deposited to B. So it gives you several statements to handle this type of transaction control. Uh, you, there are begin statements uh, to begin the transaction. When it, once it is complete, you do a commit. Otherwise, you can specify it to roll back. So those are just a few other the different language types. All right, let's get into some live examples. Okay, for these examples, I am using uh, Ubuntu, the Ubuntu operating system, and I'm going to be using the PostgreSQL database uh, to show these examples. Um, you feel free to follow along in your own database that you choose. Uh, you can install PostgreSQL on Ubuntu or on your Windows machine or your Mac uh, and follow along because I'm just gonna be using the basic command line tools for these uh, quick examples. Um, but in Ubuntu, um, how you would get access to the uh, SQL client is basically I'm going to connect as the Postgres user, give my password, and now I can run um, PSQL, which is the SQL client for the Postgres SQL database. And you can follow along and use other database systems. The commands I'm going to be showing you can run in run in others and I'll try to make note of uh, when it won't work or what, what you may need to pay attention to to get queries to work but uh, let's go ahead and continue. So basically I've connected and I've connected to the Postgres database of Postgres SQL. So the first thing I want to do um, as a quick example hello world uh, you can do select hello world and just pass it a string and it returns hello world and it tells you it returned one row. So we've done what a basic program typically does is just print out hello world. Now, before we get into doing more um, interesting things, I wanna go ahead and create a database in Postgres. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna do create a database called test. So that database has been created and then I wanna exit out of the client uh, you would do a backslash Q to do that. If you're using a different database with a different client, your commands will, of course, be different. Um, and I'm going to connect to that particular database. So I'm telling PSQL I want to connect as test. And now I am connected to the test database. So what I want to do at this point is create a new table. So I'm going to create a table called posts similar to the example we showed earlier. So these are blog posts. I'm gonna have an ID on each post. It's going to have a title, uh, a set of content, as well as a timestamp, uh, that is a date and a time without a time zone for when it was published at. So I'm going to go ahead and create that table. It says, okay, the post table's been created. So now at this point, I'm going to insert a few posts. So basically insert into the post table and I'm specifying the columns that I'm going to be entering and specifying the values for each of those columns. So ID is equivalent to one. Uh, ID is, I'm using the integer of 100. 
the title is going to be intro to SQL, the content will be epic SQL content, and publish stat will be this particular date. So we go ahead and run all the rows, and it says, okay, one row is inserted, one row is, one row is inserted. Now, just to make note, I didn't, you specify what columns you want to insert, so I did not insert one here, so it's not going to be required to put a date in there right now. I should also make a, pay particular attention to the date time field. So in Postgres SQL, you can pass a string that it will interpret and store as a date time in the table and you can pass it in this format. Other relational database systems, you may need to use a different format or you may use need to use functions to be able to parse a string to record it as a date time. And also for the insertion here, I'm actually using a the now function in Postgres. Um, other databases will have a different function, but it basically says put in the current um, date time. So now that we have that data inserted into the table, we can take a look at it by doing select star from the post table. That basically means select all the columns from the post table. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And we can see it returned our three rows with the titles and the content and the published set. Okay, so now what we can do here is we can only say we want particular columns uh, for this query. So here I'm selecting the title from posts and now it's going to again return me all the records but only show the title. If I wanted to add the content to that I would just put a comma and add the content. So now it's showing me uh, two. I can even rename particular um, columns if I want to be different so I can say make this call it a header instead. And when I run that it shows me instead of a title, it shows me header for this particular column. Now there are also some aggregate functions that you can do. So here we're saying count, um, you can do particular columns, but I'm just saying count everything from the posts table. And when I run this, you can see it doesn't return um, all the individual data, but it does give me just the resulting count of how many records are in the posts table. And lastly, you can also use things like a WHERE clause in order to re reduce the number of rows that are returned to you. So for example, um, here I'm only pulling back the records where the ID equals uh, 101. And when I run that, you'll see I don't get the three records, I just get the one record uh, and I ask for all the columns, so that's what it displays. You can also do ordering. So for example, if I run this, I'm saying give me all the columns from the posts. There's nowhere close, so it's going to give me all of them and order it um, by the title. So now it is, as opposed to t returning how it returned up here, it's going to return by title. And you can also, if you wanted to, do it by descending. So now it's going to reverse the order of how these records are being returned to you. All right, and as a final um, test, let's put some of these different things together. So basically we're going to select all the columns from the post table. We're gonna restrict it by where the published ad date is greater than uh, February 1st, 2008, and order it by the title. So we ran that there, there's only actually one post uh, that gets returned, but we get uh, the one record where the where clause uh, was appropriate. I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn more, you can check out my free course called SQL Bootcamp. There's a link in the description below this video.